But we did just get some new information about the traffic flow. The second lane in the eastbound direction has just reopened. Meantime, we are getting more information on what led to this crash. After rounds and rounds of negotiation, the man who was holed up in this hotel behind me finally let down his guard. It's not only a debate drama, Allison, it's the debate over the debate. And welcome to that debate at the very least. Both candidates now agreeing to come to Washington and meet with President Bush about the bailout deal today. This is one of the key Senate races. A lot of people were watching. It may indicate how other Senate races may go. It also may indicate how North Carolina's 15 electoral votes go in the presidential election. Uh, what do you think went wrong here for Senator Dole? They still have not been able to completely shut off the water. In fact, the machines behind me, just beyond them, they're actually trying to pump out the water just beyond the water main break. Tuesday was the only day when without any delays. You can remember yesterday, this whole entire block near Metro Center completely packed with people waiting as their train was delayed. This is supposed to get you through that line in four minutes. It's just this little card. It's called a clear card and over 3,500 people in the D.C. area have already signed up for it. The program kicks off today. These programs are not only political for the nation, they are deeply personal for D.C. residents. And this bill puts the district in the driver's seat to make decisions for its people. A week before the District City Council takes a final vote to allow gay marriage, the Senate will vote on letting federal dollars fund a host of D.C. measures, including domestic partnership benefits. Lifts that, it makes the law clearer, it makes for a uniform policy. Removing these restrictions is a good thing for home rule. It's a good thing for domestic control of our, um, of our government. So these are the most popular brands. Congress's spending bill would also clear the way for federal dollars to go to the city's four needle exchange programs designed to prevent the spread of AIDS. They currently share some $635,000 from the city and have to raise the rest on their own. With the addition of federal funding, we can save even more lives and that we can prevent even more HIV transmission. We can do even more education. We can do more outreach. It's going to be all right. But the bill holds no promise for 17-year-old Ronald Halassi. He and 1,700 other low-income students attend private schools under the D.C. voucher program. The legislation lets it expire. I'm in junior high school, and that's right, and next year will be my senior year. And, you know, what are, what are my chances going to look like? His mom, Carmen, is getting ready to apply to other magnet and charter schools, but time is tight. Now is the time to find schools that will really fit the needs of my kids. Now, the bill does let current students in the program stay, but its administrator recently said it is pulling out at the end of the school year, leaving the Department of Education to find a new administrator. The Senate is now expected to vote tomorrow afternoon. Gary Farber remembers well when consumers stopped buying American. In the mid-90s, that's when we started seeing more foreign cars come into the shop. Last year, this GM-trained mechanic became one of them when he bought his wife a Lexus. And it just got to the point where the little nitpicky stuff just starts breaking and we finally bought a Japanese car. Gary says it may be tempting for Congress to let U.S. automakers fall on their faces, but he says consider this. I talk to GM every day for parts. I talk to Ford every day for parts. A total of 20 to 25 parts suppliers every day. And he's just one mechanic. Suppliers and dealership employees want Congress to know their jobs are on the line too. They took out this three quarter page ad in the Washington Post today. The number, six million jobs. And they're good jobs. These mechanics at Dark Car's Chrysler Jeep Dodge can earn close to six figures on commission and receive good benefits. If they don't get the money, we won't get the money. It affects, you know, the guys that wash the cars. It affects the guys that run the factory lines. It affects, you know, the, the industry all around. So with the big three begging for a bigger bailout, Gary Farber says if Congress doesn't pay now, it will definitely pay later. I think it's actually their last stand. Uh, they have to really either put up or shut up. In Kensington, Jessica Weinstein, Fox 5 News. The Gaithersburg neighborhood of Montgomery Village, the place where the feds say a crucial clue against Dr. Bruce Ivins emerged. You see, before he lived in Frederick, he lived right here at number 10189. Well, I didn't know he lived here then. I had no idea. Never met him. 
Court documents released Wednesday reveal Ivan's had a fixation with the college sorority Kappa Kappa Gamma. Investigators say the anthrax-laced letters were mailed from a post box just outside a Kappa office in New Jersey. But Fox 5 tracked down one more connection. This Montgomery County Police report reveals that back in 1982, a home in Ivan's neighborhood was vandalized. The symbols for Kappa Kappa Gamma, a college sorority, scrawled in red spray paint across the fence, across the sidewalk, and a car parked in the parking lot. According to property records, at the same time those Kappa Kappa Gamma vandalisms occurred here, Dr. Bruce Ivins lived right over there in that building. And what's more, he and the victim both went to the University of North Carolina at the same time. Ivins was never named a suspect and never charged in this vandalism case. In fact, it remained unsolved. But in court papers, federal investigators called that police report a significant connection to the mindset of the man accused. A connection which they say ultimately strengthened their case against Ivins. In Frederick, Jessica Weinstein, Fox 5 News. The sign says, take one. But for two years, number 209 Brooklets Avenue in Easton has been a tough sell. Not it. Catherine Poe and her daughter sunk half a million dollars into this century-old house, hoping to resell it to retirees. And this is what the house looked like when we bought it. And as you can see, it was the worst house on the block. They worked painstakingly to pair history. We kept the original cabinets. With modern convenience. Today, people want a granite top. But still, no takers. We were really surprised, and but then we began to realize we were caught in the times we're in, and things were just slowing down and slowing down. Because there's so much inventory available in this price range, we're trying to do something to drive more traffic to this house. Driving indeed because a Toyota Prius is now part of Catherine's sales pitch. So you put an offer on the house, Catherine will throw in a Prius, but it won't happen right away. There's nearly a four month wait on these vehicles. So far, there's been more phone traffic than foot traffic, but once it does sell, Catherine Poe says she's taking a renovation vacation. When the market comes back, we'll come back at that time. In Easton, Jessica Weinstein, Fox 5 News. With seven salads on his menu and more served as a side, Chef Tony Marchanti has gusto for greens. So it's definitely a big component of our menu. But he remembers well the E. coli spinach scare of 2006, when tainted lettuce killed three people and sickened 200, proving to be quite a problem in produce. But it's getting tossed with something and consumed right away, so there's really a lot of chance that if something was wrong in that product, there's not many points of intervention to really know. Which is why, beginning Friday, the FDA will allow iceberg and spinach lettuces to be irradiated, using radiation to kill E. coli and other bacteria. I just want to make sure that it's a safe process and that, you know, we're not creating a bigger problem by trying to solve a smaller one. Critics say it not only zaps germs, but odors, textures, and taste. The FDA says the technique has improved. The amount of radiation we're talking about is much less than we already radiate meat with. I think the big problem here is that with produce, you can't cook it away. The next step will likely be getting romaine on the FDA list. So back salads like this one can be irradiated too. But is it on the menu for diners? But I personally would like to know whether my food is irradiated or not because I actually personally would probably choose non-irradiated um, foods. I think it's good from a public health standpoint, and I think a lot of people are really worried about the state of our food supplies. So next time you grab a forkful, consider this. What's a safe salad worth to you? In Bethesda, Jessica Weinstein, Fox 5 News.